A very warm good morning to everyone present here. I am Ashwarya and I cordially welcome our Honorable Principal Ma'am, Professor Vibha Singh Chauhan, our NSS Officer, Ram, Mr. Ram Sunil Kumar Lanji, sir, and the beautiful audience in today's speaker session. I would also love to extend my cordial welcome to our today's speaker, Shalini Abhilash. National Service Scheme Kirodi Mal College is glad to continue our celebration of National Youth Week. The celebration is observed to honor the ideals and thoughts of Swami Vivekananda, who had tremendous faith in youth. Vivekananda always highlighted the role of youth in the process of nation building and inspired them to have a confident attitude. Continuing with this aim, I would welcome you all to the theme of today's event, which is holistic wellness for youngsters. I would first of all urge all of you to mute yourselves to avoid any sort of disturbance. Now, I would like to invite our Honorable Principal Ma'am to say a few words. Thank you, Aishwarya. Thank you very much. And a very warm welcome to our guest this morning, Madam Shalini Abilash. Thank you, Madam, for being with us and uh, addressing an area which is of deep concern and importance to all of us. Holistic wellness for youngsters. Uh, including uh, nutrition, yoga, and wellness. And all three are very, very important aspects of holistic growth in the right direction. All of us have been under stress and uncertainty, actually, uh, through the last more than two years. And it is the guidance that we have got from some experts like you about mental wellness, nutrition, time management, physical health, spiritual, emotional, holistic health, that I think a lot of us have been helped to go through this time period. We are especially in college concerned about our young students whom we have not met. We met the present third year students physically for a very, very short time and maybe uh, perhaps a semester. And after that, we've been functioning online. That has its own anxieties. It is only natural to be out in open air to be with friends in companionship, even for older people and much more for youngsters. So the message I suppose is that we have to take care of ourselves and of each other and of society at large. And today's morning session, I think is going to uh, fulfill much of that aim. So um, many thanks to uh, Shalini ji for being here. Uh, I'm sure the students will uh, give a more detailed uh, introduction, but I have been told that you have done your masters in yoga and nutrition, and you have been active on social media. So um, uh, the fact that the students have identified you, requested you, and you have agreed to come, it shows your goodness as well as the ability of our students and the NSS. So I'm extremely thankful to the students, the NSS of Karurimal College, the program officer, Dr. Ram Sunil, to put this whole morning together. And it's a, it's a good be, a beginning or a good program in the youth week. And we look forward to having a continuous contact leading to this kind of discussion and program. So thank you very much, everyone, the audience here, the participants, thank you very much for being here. And I hope you find this fruitful. So on behalf of Kurodimal College, all the staff and students, a very, very warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. 
Now I would like to invite our NSS program officer, Mr. Ram Sinil Kumar Lalji, sir, to share a few words. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Ashwarya. Uh, thank you, Principal, ma'am, for uh, uh, taking out your valuable time today morning for uh, this this particular event, and thank you all the participants for joining in. Uh, in fact, uh, what Principal Ma'am was saying that we have been suffering for the last two years, and uh, that that trauma is to be uh, managed by somehow through these uh, uh, nicer ways by the speakers, by the people who are expert in that. So uh, uh, last day, uh, that is yesterday itself, I was having another uh, program with my chemistry students, and there the speaker, in fact told that they are, although there is limitation with the online teaching, there is no doubt, all the students, everybody was agreeing to that. But she also pointed out that there are many areas where because of this online mode of teaching, we have been learning so many things. Now, Shalini Madam, I don't know where from she is, where she is currently based, but she is taking her, 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 her uh, session from there. Maybe she is in some other part of the country, but still she is able to do all our students, they are taking up the session from different parts of the country. So in one way, this online mode has given us that opportunity, although it has that interaction part is missing slightly. And uh, for that, we have specialized people like uh, Shalini Madam who are going to uh, uh, inter interact with our students, make them more interactive with our participants and uh, individual among themselves as well. So uh, I think this online mode has definitely given us some advantage at least which otherwise we would, we would not have explored that way and uh, we hope that after uh, corona ends uh, this pandemic uh, end, ends altogether we'll be meeting together and we are going to miss all these days the way we have organized these events well with this uh, i thank you everyone for joining in with these large numbers we have uh, crossed the century right now and uh, i welcome everyone for this particular event. Welcome the guest speaker. And uh, uh, thank you, Principal Ma'am. Uh, uh, and Ashwarya, you can please proceed further. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Without wasting any more time, I would like to introduce our audience to today's guest. We have with us Shalini Abhilash. She's a happy woman, a happy mother, and a holistic wellness expert. She has been teaching holistic wellness for 12 years. She is someone who strongly abides by the fact that holistic wellness is the key to actual wellness. Now, I take pride in inviting you to address the audience. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, hi, Aishwarya. Uh, hello, principal, ma'am, and uh, hello uh, to Mr. Ram Sunil, sir, the coordinator. I'm really, very really glad and happy to be here because I think it's the first time I've been approached by a really, very young crowd to talk about this. Um, I don't know, for some reason, we always believe wellness is for age old people and it's not something cool to do. And uh, holistic wellness and being healthy, eating healthy, it's all for the ones who have gained weight after pregnancy or uh, in uh, corporate stress, or maybe it belongs to somebody who's a senior citizen. That's how it has always been. But for the first time, when, uh, you know, I think um, Utkarsha was the first person to approach me and ask me for it, I was really taken aback saying that this sounds really amazing that there's a really bunch of teenagers and young youngsters who are really interested in knowing this. And out of curiosity, I asked this question, men, how many people would be there? And when she said uh, there might be around 80, 90, honestly, I didn't believe those words because I thought where 80, 90 is going to young, 80, 80, 90 young people, where are they going to come and sit and listen to these things? But I see the number is 100 now. And I'm really, very overwhelmed and really, very happy to have met you all in this platform. Thank you so much for Kirorimal College for really organizing such meaningful and important uh, uh, sessions. And special thanks to the coordinators and the principal to really bring it out to the young kids. Um, to begin the session, I just wanted to ask how does this session go? Because uh, being used to online for two years, we are always on mute and the video is off, audio is off. So are we going to do a session where I'm just going to sit and talk some lectures and you're going to listen to the boring lecture and go back home or you want to be it interactive? Let's make it fun. Let's make it lively and sensible. How do the audience want it? 
please feel free the feel free to use the chat box for your questions comments so this is just my first way of checking if most of you are listening okay so jokes apart holistic wellness for youngsters would someone like to share what did it come to your mind when you heard that topic anyone of you would like to share Uh, singa then and i'll start and if anybody okay. else also has a definition please feel free to use a chat box yeah. ma'am when it comes to me and i think of holistic wellness for me holistic wellness means wellness in overall that is not just my physical wellness not just that i'm healthy in terms of i'm not sick but also mentally i'm free mentally also i'm healthy i'm not struck with some anxiety spiritually i feel that you know i'm alive not just in terms of breathing but in terms of living as well i feel that i have a life i have a spirit i have some kind of belongingness so in total i will feel that you know if i am completely healthy in all aspects of my living i would say that i'm holistically well yeah that's so beautiful like as simply put up holistic wellness why do we call it holistic why the special terminology some very uh, you know fancy sounding terminology called holistic and not just wellness the word holistic literally means a whole sum you cannot say a person is healthy if they are physically fit strong a gym body but mentally they are not okay you cannot say somebody is healthy when you are mentally okay but physically and emotionally they are not so three aspect of a human wellness that is physical mental and emotional when somebody is feeling really very strong and happy and content in these three areas we can be saying that they are holistically well so wellness can never be divided so today's world when we see wellness it's all about eat diet or to be on a diet particularly just be on a diet don't know what diet that is just follow some random diet being on diet is called wellness going to the gym and lifting heavy weights is called wellness running on the roads marathons or some fancy zumba classes are called wellness uh going to therapy sessions for your mind and emotion is called wellness or we don't know so now the only point i figured out in my personal life is see as like everyone else uh my my understanding of wellness was you just have to be physically active that's what how i understood wellness is it's just over a period of my education and along with my experience that has taught me everything has to be given importance your physical mental emotional today's social media or world has just made wellness as a very physical part you just have to look physically nice you just have to be either in size s or size xs or maximum a size m then you are said to be fit and well wellness is not that it's something way beyond now at this moment let me ask you a question for all the audience present here what do you feel about yourself at this moment right now sitting here how do you feel about yourself physically how do you feel about yourself mentally how do you feel yourself emotionally now the question if if at all the answer to these question is i feel extremely good i feel so fit i feel happy i feel very relaxed then you are doing a fantastic job in your life that you are already doing just continue doing it one if for any of these question if your answer was i don't feel good i feel low at times i don't i don't have the energy to do what i want to do sorry for the interruption so i don't want to i don't have the energy to do what i want to do mentally i feel extremely stressed that might be because of your studies or this online or this pandemic stress going around emotionally you feel extremely drained out then that's an indication that there is something that you need to start working on for yourself you know your body mind and emotions so ensuring that you always take care of your body mind and your emotions is a very simple way of putting how holistic wellness or health should look like the next comes to golden question why now you are all the young kids like you know okay i can call you kids cuz i am in my mid 30 so i can call you kids for me you know you are just all the happy youngsters happy kids so <clears throat> the question is why for us we are all fit and fine we are uh, so young and why wellness for us the answer that i found out a very simple answer that i found out for this is what you saw in your 20s what you do in your 20s has is actually the foundation for the rest of your life 
for example if somebody at 40 or 45 is developing a lifestyle related diseases somebody at 40 or 45 is fighting with some sort of obesity or some sort of health issue i want you to understand that it did not start just one month or one day before so whatever you do in your 20s is going to have a greater reflection and a greater uh, result in your 30s 40s 50s 60s so at that age i hope you don't go around looking for a person like me to help you so in, in when it comes to the fitness and wellness industry there are so many experts uh, uh principal ma'am just said that there are so many wellness experts out there to help people of course yes it's a great pleasure to help people understand their wellness but what i would consider as a greatest achievement is if you kids today when you grow up you don't need a you don't necessarily you know you don't need a person like me to help you that means you have taken care of yourself that means you have just been good and doing good to yourself that is actually you know a greater success story so i'm a yoga teacher and uh, just a small uh, story as to how it started uh i was 9 year old when i was introduced to yoga for the first time and the first thing that i told my mom is i am not old you are old you go to the class not me it's not for me that was my first response and then from then onwards it was always a struggle so my mom uh, believed in gentle parenting she was used to be very soft no shouting screaming hitting not that kind of a mother she always believed in conversations talking explaining extremely patient and a person who's into completely gentle parenting so for 6 years in my life it was all about bride i'll go to yoga class for 3 months i need a dog i'll do yoga for 2 months i need a dress so how i started off yoga like all rebellious kids i think most of you here more or less if you are that a very typical yeah. rebel, rebellious kid i was and started off yoga like that when i was 16 i had a conversation with my guru we changed my entire perspective towards my life the way i do it and uh, 20 years later 19 years later i'm just sitting here like this the question or what really mattered that that incident was um some fun activity let's do now those who are like alert and listening or those who are like not please come back and listen to this question so when i was 16 what happened is my guru asked me one simple question he said you answer this question then that will decide whether you need yoga wellness or not i said okay the question was very simple thing talk about yourself for 1 minute okay talk about yourself for 1 minute okay but you don't give me your history i am born here my father is here my mother is here i am telling you to talk about yourself not about your parents not about the history where you were born what you were doing so don't give me your history that's not what you are that is you're talking about some place somebody else and all this things so don't give me the history second condition don't talk about your likes and dislikes because you were not born with those likes and dislikes i like black color you did not know what is black color when you were born right your likes and dislikes is something that you picked up in this journey of life in this experience together so i like this food i don't like that food is it that's your experience that's not what you are second thing third thing please don't tell me about your future i want this i want that i desire to become this i want to become that one second just excuse me okay i'm really sorry for the uh, uh, intervention in in between so the third question was don't tell me about your future because that's something so uncertain you yourself don't know what it holds so when you don't know what it holds you will never know uh, what it's going to be so without these three things talk about yourself for one minute was the question that he asked and that moment i just realized i have nothing else to tell there is nothing i can talk about myself so maybe i am only my past what my parents told me the history where i was born blah 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 what's my family or i am only the likes and dislikes in my life that is out of experience and my future which is totally unpredictable we don't know am i only that 
is there nothing more than only these three things i said i don't i i tried i couldn't even make one sentence just one sentence and then i realized okay then he said you are something more than these three things and it's yoga and your wellness journey that will help you discover that so maybe for that you should join that was the day i stopped doing yoga for the sake of bribes and gifts from my mom and i felt there is something definitely more to me more to my health and wellness more to my purpose of life than this and started my journey with wellness and yoga is one which helped me discover myself what i am i deep within how this body is made how beautifully my mind is made how beautifully this body and mind coordinates with each other to function in life and the more and more i started digging inside myself the curiosity the curiosity has never stopped last 20 years or so and it's going on and on and on i hope really most of you here take that one small example that i told one incident as an inspiration and start thinking who are you what are you so if i ask you simple question when did dipi uh, um, katrina kaif get married we all know the answer how was the wedding we all know the answer what is the most uh, famous thing in the world right now who is the most famous actress we all know that do you know anything about your body no do you know where is uh, what's the role of a mitochondria like i don't know so do you know why do you feel hungry you overeat you eat less do you know you are nourishing your body what happens to the food that goes inside what happens to the proteins that go inside you don't have to be a scientist you don't have to be an expert to know this this is just your body this is a basic fundamentals that we should know about our body what am i doing with my body how is my body some basic very fundamental understanding what's happening with my mind when was the last time you felt like a breakdown how did you uh, do you have resilience like every time you have a mental breakdown emotional breakdown how strongly are you able to come back and address it how well do we really know these things maybe that's a slight problem in the current world right now we have so much of information about everybody's life outside we have very bare minimum little information about the whole world that is inside you and the more and more you start exploring this the more and more you will understand the importance of taking care of it the one simple reason why should you be really taking care of it why anybody would like to use the chat box to tell why should you be healthy i, I in, one, in one of the group sessions like this somebody asked me a question why should i really worry about all these things in my 30s or 40s if i have a diabetes or a problem it's okay i can take medicine medicine has grown up a lot medicine field has grown up a lot there is help i can do it you think visiting hospitals taking medicines and being on treatment is a fun it's absolutely not yeah exactly to enjoy each and every aspect of life so just imagine this you're all youngsters you're in your 20s i'll give you a small practical example as to how it works how many of you stay up very late in the night like 12 o'clock 1 o'clock 2 o'clock either watching movies studying staying up for a very long time right yeah yeah me 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 oh my god i see so many me yes does it make you feel anything in the morning when you wake up right you don't feel good you feel tired you feel exhausted you read you don't feel right nice imagine in your 20s the recovery rate in your body is very very high okay for example there is something called a recovery rate in the body that is from the time you wake up in the morning till you go to bed your body is non stop working millions of cells are dying millions of new cells are taking birth there is a uh, hundreds of functions that's happening inside the body and you have to recover from it and the rate of recovery is very high in your 20s if your recovery rate is so high you feel like this imagine in your 30s or 40s you just go to bed one day late have you seen your parents how they really struggling yes. just you go back i think the best example is just go back to the aged people at your home 
who's not your age in their 30 40s in their in their 30s 40s 50s 60s just go back and see how much they are really struggling to keep themselves up with their body mind and let me tell you they would have done their best in their 20s but still struggling can you imagine what would happen if you don't even do your best in your 20s right okay so i am really not honestly i am not using a threat matrix to help make you understand this but just a little way of explaining sorry just this is a little way of uh, making you all understand why wellness is really important um someone asked me in one of the session what's your fitness goal what's your wellness goal so you go to my instagram page uh my instagram page i'm just talking about all these things wellness fitness you know holistically how to take care of yourself someone asked me what is your health goal what is your fitness goal uh i said some answer but they actually thought i'm going to tell i want to be 50 kgs uh, i want to be strong very observed answers but honestly speaking why do i do what i do why do I really take care of myself because i just love my life and i just love this world and i want to have the best of the living underline not the best of the life but the less best of the living that i can do when i close my eyes and i visualize i imagine a 60 year old shalini do i choose a 60 year old shalini who is into diabetes blood pressure medications doctor visits can't walk 10 steps very cautious can't enjoy food or when i close my eyes and imagine a 60 year shalini who is doing a bungee jumping and can eat 10 jamuns that is wellness for me that is fitness for me irrespective of your age doesn't matter your 20 doesn't matter your 80 in every age category do you have a strong body mind physical and mental health to live the life you want do you feel good about being in this body is a very important aspect of wellness if you are then you're healthy doesn't matter whatever size you are how many of you feel that makes sense how many of you visualize yourself in your 80s and 70s doing some adventurous sports eating whatever you want no restriction in your life a totally freedom and unrestricted life that should be your actual wellness goal one last thing to just yeah absolutely one last thing to just add on here the importance of holistic wellness in youngsters is not just about a healthy life a pandemic situation a importance of physical mental health but of late i've been really seeing people struggling from a lot of insecurities insecurity about the way they look you don't feel confident about the way your skin is the way your hair is the way your body is i don't know the social media or whatever the media that has made you start thinking that it's the young crowd which is very often finding themselves very unhappy about themselves right how 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 many of you it happens you're scrolling through instagram you see somebody with a great body great body whatever they call it for themselves somebody is in a somebody who's very thin somebody who's very tall somebody who's very fair they can dance beautifully doesn't make really that the, if it is impacting you then i think we are in a wrong influence the reason why youngsters should take holistic wellness seriously because when you get into this journey of wellness you will all understand that health is not just about a size wellness is not about being in size 0 uh beautiful is not about having a flawless fair skin if you start your journey with your health and wellness you will start understanding to appreciate your body and your mind for what it is how many of us feel really very bad that you don't receive appreciation from your parents teachers whomever friends like i have done so much of hard work nobody realized it nobody understood my parents are always shouting at me my teachers are always unhappy with me 
my question is how many of you appreciate your own self how many of you appreciate your body for what it does for you every day did you go and tell you know what please take so much of oxygen you know what please convert this protein into muscle you know what please send this waste outside did you go telling it no it just does it automatically so how many of you appreciate your body for what it is how many of you appreciate your mind for what it is how many of you appreciate everything that you have with you right now in this moment the sense of gratitude the sense of humbleness i feel is majorly missing in the current scenario if you start your journey with your wellness it will teach you how to be grateful for yourself how to be yeah we never thought of it we really never thought of appreciating this body we really never thought of appreciating our mind we feel bad that somebody doesn't love me we feel bad that somebody doesn't care for me we feel bad that somebody doesn't appreciate me question is do you love yourself loving yourself i'm not talking about uh, having a big bun big glass of coke and sitting in a movie theater and watching movie that's not what loving yourself really means loving yourself is way beyond it something really huge how many of you love yourself how many of you take care of yourself how many of you appreciate this body and mind that you have your wellness your wellness journey will teach you that so this attitude is what will be the foundation for the rest of your life i keep saying this always just keep looking around do you do you really go around and look around you see so many people are so unhappy about themselves your it might be somebody in your family who's constantly cribbing ayo oh, i'm not losing weight i'm not good looking look at her how good looking she is your happiness will never come from becoming thin and uh, somebody appreciating you your happiness will only come when you love yourself and to love yourself you should take care of yourself it's all hand in hand so wellness and fitness is not just about being thin being physically strong lifting weights and looking a particular way it is about the way you're going to feel about yourself for the rest of your life i know every human being here every single human being here i just want to tell you you are all beautiful in your own i just i just i'm sorry so every single human being here i just want to tell you that you are all beautiful in your own ways very very beautiful and amazing in your own ways and i really wish you see that beauty inside you and just fall in love with it love yourself take care of yourself and i just end my talk here thank you so much thank you so much ma'am ma'am suffice to say this was a very important and a breath of fresh air event that it's very important when you talk about youth week as in we as youth needs to need know this it's important that we talk about this and important that we are aware of this now the stage is open for the audience please feel free to raise your questions you can either unmute yourselves and speak yourselves otherwise you can to the chat box we have a question from abhishek uh, abhishek go ahead uh Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah, uh, ma'am, my question is the uh, as you told one story of your childhood, like in sixteenth, you were asked a question. So, do you have an answer to it? Like, do you have a precise answer? And can we give a precise answer? Like, uh, from yoga, we see meditation will take us to another way of life, and meditation has a power to convert us. Like, uh, we have examples. of uh, gautam bodh and of all and all other people great people sages but do we have because we can't reach that level until we meditate to that extreme so do we have that answer absolutely so my 16 year started off with that question as to who am i and what i realized is i started this journey looking for a one particular answer so i thought maybe one day i will find an answer to what it is but i realized the answer is evolving it is never a final answer at 35 today i am sitting here and i know that i i am my body what am i i am a combination of millions of cells i am a combination of multiple organs functioning together to just keep me alive i am my mind i am my thoughts i am my the way i analyze the way i 
perceive things around. So today, I, I did it very differently when I was 25. I did it very differently at 30. Today, the Shalini at 35 is totally very different. And I'm sure that it is very different. So who am I is a question which will I will keep exploring the answer. And every time I'm finding new answers to myself, and every time I find a new answer, I'm just falling in love with myself more and more. The more I'm understanding about myself. Yeah, I'm a soul. I'm a soul. I'm a combination of cells. I am a concept of mind, the way it perceives things. So these are the things I think should be more explored. Abhishek, I hope that answered your question. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Ishika, go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. Ma'am, my question is, ki, jase aapne bola, we have very hectic schedules, like we have to think about careers and education along with, but we also want to have our mental health, training, meditation, kare. but just our schedule, ban chuka, like we have colleges, societies, and we have assignments and all these things. So our time nikalna, particularly, it's get little difficult. So can you tell us like some short tips or something to relax our mind? For intervals like five this minute can see you feel freshness so we can continue ahead okay two things i would like to make a point here point number one as a nutritionist as a yoga teacher as well somebody who's done my masters and currently you know on my road to pursue my phd with all the understandings and learnings and experience and teachings i'm telling you this please 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 don't believe that there is some hacks for health Social media is filled with these things. Three foods for this, two exercises for mind, five. It doesn't work like that. Okay, please. Because the reason I'm telling you this is somewhere in your, in your mind, if you decide that there's going to be some shortcut, automatically you'll start looking for that shortcut. Only. It's, it's the way the mind becomes, right? Now, simple. If somebody says, you will get a question paper for this exam, don't study. Instead of studying, the mind will constantly keep looking forward. Where did I get? Where can I get this question paper from for the exam? Likewise, when it comes to your health and fitness, please, there is no shortcuts. You have to dedicate your time. Do some. I'll, I'll only tell four things. You can do four simple things to begin with. One, 80% of the time, be sure you're eating healthy. The biggest problem with youngsters nowadays is very untimely eating. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 10 o'clock, eat whenever you want, eat whatever you want, eat however you want. Just try to bring some discipline in your eating. 80% of the time, please eat healthy. Now though it is ruled out because every one of us are sitting at home, no other choice than to eat homemade food. But I hope this continues even after the pandemic. 80% of the time, eat homemade, simple home-cooked food, rule one. Rule two, Hydrate yourself at least two liters of water a day. Rule three, try to move as much as possible. Not just one hour. Of, try to get that one hour of exercise in a day or half an hour, 45 minutes. If you can go out, go out. Otherwise, at home. Fourth one, please pay attention towards your mental health. Please don't ignore it. Now coming to your question as to what can be the simple tip that you can do is every one hour once, no matter what I learn. So I just want to tell this example where I learned from. I learned this from a senior neurologist. Okay. This senior neurologist, uh, he was my client. I used to teach him yoga. So the senior neurologist, and I'm from Bangalore anyway, which was like one of you were asking like, where am I from? I'm from Bangalore. So the senior neurologist is one of the most reputed uh, hospital in uh, Bangalore. I saw him doing this. Every 50, uh, sorry. Every 55 minutes once, he will take a break for five minutes or three minutes. For example, time is 11 o'clock. He starts his day at six o'clock. He always gets up at six o'clock, starts his day at six o'clock. 6.55, no matter what he is doing, where he is, he'll just sit down, close his eyes and do breathing for three minutes. Just take a deep inhale, exhale. He'll do that three minute breathing. He'll get up and he'll go start doing his work. His watch is set in such a way that Every 55 minutes, there's an alarm which goes off, which reminds him to sit down and breathe. And I'm like, why? Why do you do this? You know, every day you do yoga one hour. He says, no, 55 minutes, 
I have been doing so much. My body, my mind, my emotions, my work, hectic schedule. I need that five minutes to just wind up. I need that five minutes to refresh. I need that five minutes to let go of everything that happened in 55 minutes. That is something that I also picked up from him. That's a beautiful thing that I picked up from him that no matter what I'm doing, every hour I dedicate three minutes. No matter what I'm doing, class, workshops, irrespective of it, I have made a habit that I will sit down, close my eyes, take deep breaths for the three minutes and just relax myself. And trust me, it works wonders. So could answer your question, uh, Ishika. Thank you. Navya, go ahead. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, yeah, I, I, uh, I wanted to ask, as a beginner, where should we, you know, start? Because we can uh, just, uh, you know, uh, go up and one day, you know, I'm doing yoga and I, I'm perfect at all the activities they make us perform. And another thing, like, uh, I really like to interact with people a lot. Uh, at uh, but the thing is, most of my friends they are awake at night and, you know. Just to uh, you know, unwind myself, I I have to talk to them, but they all are awake at, late at night, so I can't make my schedule like that. That I sleep on time and wake up on time, just it is going to affect my happiness or something. So, is there anything that I can do for that? See, there is no way. There is no way you can uh, bring a fixation as in. Your body needs eight hours of sleep, seven hours of sleep to fix itself and repair itself. That is for sure. If you say, I don't have the seven hours of sleep, so my body is not able to repair itself completely. So can I do something? So the, no, there is no way that you can do it. The work sleep can do, only sleep can do. You cannot make bring in something else to make that job. Navya, you're too young. I understand it's very difficult. The peer pressure is very high. You are supposed to, if you want to be belong to a group, you just have to do what the group is doing. I was, I have, I was there. I understand. See, it takes little time for you to bring out that balance. Balance wherein you tell your friends, uh, I am okay till this time, not after this time. So I'm not asking you to go to bed at nine o'clock. Technically, as a nutritionist and a wellness expert, I should be telling you that. Sleep by 10 o'clock. But I understand if I give you too much of guidelines, it's difficult for you to follow. It doesn't make any sense. The maximum you can tell your friends is, see, I have to go to bed at 9 o'clock. Let me stay awake till 10.30 or 11, not beyond that. So you are giving time to your friends, but also you're setting boundaries. As youngsters, it's really very important that you learn to set boundaries for yourself. What is okay and what is not okay. It will take time. It won't happen overnight. It will take time. But you will eventually learn it. We can answer your question. question. We have another question from Abhishek. Uh, Abhishek, go ahead. Ma'am, uh, ma as asked by Navya, the same questions like we all are teenagers, so we all face this problem. Sleep, sleeping is a major problem for all of us. So, time does time matter? How, how long we sleep? Or uh, it's a how well we sleep. So we heard of people like they sleep for four hours, three hours, then they do well with their work. So does the timing or that, as you said, seven hours, it, it matters uh, a lot. Yeah. But we, yes, Yeah, Abhishek, let me tell you, no human being can function well in three to four hours. I have done that. Okay. So when I was a teenager, I used to sleep only for four hours and I was energetic. I was a sports player. So I was extremely active. I've done that. But as I'm telling you, those people whom you're seeing who sleep only for three hours, four hours, but they're okay the next day, these all happen only in your 20s. The impact of this, the side effect of this, you will start realizing only in the later part of your life. One. So no matter what stage in your life you are, you're a teenager or you're a 40-year-old, Seven hours of sleep is compulsory for this body to rest, heal, repair, and start working back. That much of rest has to be given. Seven hours of sleep is compulsory. One. Second thing, I understand that you right now, uh, the education is such a way that it is really very competitive and you are have a, you actually, you guys have a more hectic lifestyle and schedule than any other grown-ups. 
the only way to manage a hectic life is by being organized about it and the biggest problem in teenagers is not being organized i'm really sorry for saying this because i was also there i understand where it comes from being organized is the only way to manage things you need to have a very defined timetable so for example today my life is very organized that's why i'm able to do it so if you go back to my instagram handle if you see what i do and the way i put up things always people ask me where do you really have time i have time because i am organized so today is wednesday or oh, sorry saturday you ask me wednesday at 12 o'clock what am i doing i know what am i doing at the time it's planned it's scheduled the problem in teenage is that the way we approach is ha kal dekhenge come with the flow you take it with the flow so today you decide what to do tomorrow that is why it is making you feel very stressful in life be it studies be it education be it taking care of your health the teenage stress is because there is so much to do there is a lot to do and you are not planned and organized about it so maybe try to bring in that being very planned and organized that will actually solve you 80% of your problems in the life right now abhishek hope it answers your question uh, uh, we have sorry may i ask a linking yeah. question like does it matter to what time we sleep like in generally people sleep at night if we skip that night time if we sleep during our day or if we sleep like in 3 or 4 hours halt does it effect about ki kab kitna so rahe hai but just we are taking 7 hours sleep does it matter it completely matters i just want to introduce one uh, terminology here a scientific terminology called circadian rhythm C I R C A D I A N circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm is a natural inbuilt clock inside the body. It is a naturally made clock inside your body. Like how you see animals. Have you seen any animals chit chatting at one o'clock in the night, talking to each other? Have you seen any animals going for a walk and just you know, आज कुछ करेंगे कहीं तो two o'clock. They follow a sun pattern that when during the daytime they're active. and during the night time there is this is a circadian rhythm which is fixed inside the body there is nothing you can do about it to change it so according to the circadian rhythm your body has two main hormones one is the cortisol an active hormone by 6 o'clock in the morning your body will start producing cortisol cortisol hormone which will keep all your organs active it will keep all your cells active that is to tell get up to kaam karna hai get up and start working by evening 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock your body will start producing melatonin that is a resting hormone melatonin will go down and slow down all your organs your circulations your cells to tell your body you have to rest and repair so please think of it like this when the melatonin is produced which is telling your body go rest but you are active at that time so your body is not able to function and it is doing the opposite and when your cortisol is released in the morning which is telling your body to be active but you want to sleep this disturbance will have a greater impact on your physical very especially me- mental health the reason why mentally we are finding it very difficult right now is because of the sleep issues you are doing exactly opposite of what your body is doing the reason why you are physically and mentally suffering so sleep time matters when i say 7 hours of sleep it is not like any 7 hours night 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock let's say 11 o'clock in the night to 6 in the morning is a compulsorily sleeping time hope it answers your question lavya ishika sorry uh, we have one more question from yeah. ranjuchika she is asking hello ma'am how can we be mentally well and strong what should we do when we are sad or stressed okay so you have to first identify the cause of it what is there is two things one three things rather cause uh, root and solution you first go out and find out the cause what is making you feel sad is it a person or a situation or your own self identify that first one second thing go and find out why are you feeling stressed about it for example it's like this 90% of the stress is basically because it's self induced let me take a very typical example my mother is shouting at me 
that I'm not studying. So I feel very angry or very sad for whatever reason. Let's tell a typical day in a teenager's life. Now I feel sad or I'm angry at my mother because she's shouting at me. But if you go back and see yourself, you will be mostly upset. It's because you yourself was not happy with what you're doing. Right? So first go identify why are you feeling sad? Second, go ask that question, is it genuine or not? If it is genuine, then you go have a very different approach towards it. But if you know that you are feeling sad because of your own action, try to correct your own actions. Hope it answers your question, Ruchika. We have one more question from Soumya. Sometimes I feel demotivated and emotionally break down for my career. In that particular time, what should I do? Okay. So the only answer that I can ever have for this is uh, there is something called as uh, as a teenager, we all do. We I did it a lot and I'm sure that you all are doing it a lot. Procrastinating. That is postponing and not doing anything about it. Right? There is exam. There is exam ka fear. There is this fear for marks. Fear for future. What are you doing about it? Nothing. I feel depressed sitting on the couch watching Instagram. So, procrastination means there is an issue, there is a problem, there is a concern, but you are not doing anything about it and you are postponing it. That itself is the reason for all these things. So, my thing is, please try not to procrastinate. Just get up and take the actions needed. Okay. Some of you here might be having some health issue. Okay. Let me say myself. I have a health issue. I have my thyroid. Or I have my diabetes or whatever. Am I going to sit down and feel bad and ask him like, why did this happen to me? Or am I going to get up and start doing something about it? So please don't postpone when it comes to your studies, your career, your... I understand it is very uncertain right now, very challenging times, but just don't lose your faith. Just don't lose your hope. Just keep giving your best. And I'm really very sure when you give your best, some best will come back. Maybe time matters but it'll always come back. So please don't give up on your hopes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Hope it answers your question, Samya. If there are any more questions, please uh, try them in the chat box or raise your voice. We'll be waiting for two more minutes. Otherwise, we'll move on. Yeah. So if any one of you, uh, what are you wearing on the finger? That's a fracture. So... Uh, I just fractured my finger, so that's a cast. I know it would have looked some cool new accessory in the market. If you're thinking it's some, some cool new accessory in the market I'm wearing, no, no. This is just a cast for the fracture. Ah, it's okay, it's okay, Abhishek, that's fine. Because it so happened that somebody also asked me, where did you buy this from? This ring looks cool. I said, no, this is not a ring, this is a cast. <laughs> yeah. Any one of you have any doubts, need any help, something that I can help you out, you can always reach out to me. And the only place I'm active on is on my Instagram handle. So you can reach out on my Instagram handle if you have any doubts. And I'll try my best to help you in whatever way I can. Uh, Ma'am, we have one more question from an anonymous person. She's saying that there are a lot of times when I want to cry and just have all of it out. But I just can't. What shall I do in such cases? Sorry, can you please repeat it again? Uh, there are a lot of times where I want to cry and have it all out, but I just can't. What shall I do in such situations? Okay, so when you really feel it that way, I think if you can't bring it out in front of people, you can just go out, be alone and bring it out to your own self or somebody, a very close friend, somebody whom you can talk to or the best way to do is what I do is uh, you can stand in front of a mirror, look at the person you see yourself and imagine that person as somebody who can understand you. Of course, you are the person who can understand yourself better, right? You can talk it out to that person that you see in the mirror and just go give a hug to yourself, talk to yourself. See, these things are not considered to be, uh, what do you call, mad. Once upon a time, if you're talking to yourself or you're, you know, being with yourself, that is considered to be like, why are you doing these mad things? No, those things are not mad things. It's a way of expressing. So if talking to yourself, looking at yourself in the mirror and just pouring it out, you can write it as a letter. Uh, you can just 
you know, express it to yourself. I hope that will help you feel better. Thank you, ma'am. Hope it answers your question. We have one more question from Rigid. Sometimes if I'm about to do something and somebody just nags me for doing the same thing, just the moment before I was going to do it, I don't feel happy that I don't feel that much happy to do that work anymore. So what should I do about that? Don't worry. See, one more thing I want all of you to really understand here is all of you mostly is having all these teenage problems, this typical teenage problems and everyone goes through it. So I want you to please understand that you're not alone. I have gone through it. What most of you are talking is something even I have experienced it. And this teenage hormone, it will settle in some years. So just don't take it too seriously. There's only one thing that you have to take seriously. Take yourself very serious. Take your studies and career very serious. Rest of the thing, don't take it so seriously. It's okay. It'll just pass out. Thank you, ma'am. As we have reached the end of this spectacular event, firstly, I'd like to say a few things to you, ma'am. And thank you so much for this session. The slogan that we started this session with, that holistic wellness is actual wellness. It's something that we all stand by now. It's something that we all agree upon because it is completely true. Holistic wellness is what is called as actual wellness. And ma'am, thank you so much for opening up our definition of what self-love is, what individualism is, what wellness is, and in all what happiness is. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this session. This session is something which will stay with us forever. Now I would like to invite our NSS program officer, Mr. Ramsunit Kumar Lalji, to give the vote of thanks. Ram, sir? Yeah. yeah, thank you, Ashwarya. Thank you so much. In fact, uh, I was listening to the entire conversation and it was quite pleasant to know about uh, loving ourselves. I mean, this should be the philosophy. This is how we can connect our mind with our body. And this is how we can grow further and further and further. So uh, I must especially thank our uh, uh, speaker, uh, uh, Ms. Shalini, for her enlightening words. And then, uh, yeah, and giving our audience, all the NSS volunteers and the teachers and other students who are, who are into this session, the in-depth analysis how they should they should perceive the life how should they believe about their mind their body how should they think and yeah literally i mean these these are the formative ages up till say 18 20 that these hormones have their own impact but we should not get carried away with that and we should focus on body our mind and the holistic development so with this i thank uh, shalini ma'am i especially thank Principal ma'am for uh, permitting us to organize this event, all the volunteers and the students who are into this organization of this particular event, and uh, and all any other person who is outside from this uh, college system, they also have joined that I can see. So thank you everyone for joining in and uh, we'll meet on some other time. Till then, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I just want to thank you so much, sir, and I just wanted to thank you <clears throat> and the principal, ma'am, because of all the sessions that I've ever done in these 12 years of my life, this actually was one of the best sessions to really connect with so much of young and fresh mind and hearts. Thank you so much for this amazing uh, opportunity. It was really very lovely connecting with you all. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.